All righty. Thanks for coming. Appreciate y'all coming out. Um, uh, media day, day before the first day. Um, always an exciting day around here for um, coaches and players alike. And um, you get those pre-camp um, um, anxious moments a little bit. And you're, you're ready to roll and you're ready to start. And you've really been working for tomorrow and this training camp um, since the day after we walked off the field in Tucson um, at the bowl game. And so you're kind of ready to go. And this is the fourth quarter. It's the last part of your training um, for uh, preparation for the season. And, and um, so I'm excited about it. And um, this training camp has a little bit different feel um, for us as a staff as we kind of talk about it. Um, a lot of that has to do with a lot of the guys coming back um, that have played and, and played well. And um, so the, um, the, the theme a little bit um, or part of this training camp um, is not just the experience coming back, but it's guys that we do need some spots replaced. We do need some, some answers to some spots. Um, I think the leadership developing and the chemistry um, amongst the team is always um, of interest and of note as we uh, evaluate all of that. And, um, you know, the, the mix of, of the physicalness and the competitiveness and how many live reps you have versus um, getting guys to the fight and making sure you're fresh. So um, that's as you look into training camp, we got a lot of guys back. Um, I think this is a talented recruiting class with newcomers, with some transfers coming in that um, will create for themselves roles. Um, you know, my guess is as good as yours. Um, it's so much of uh, how can he come in and play has to do with non-football stuff, um, moving to Logan for the first time, being away from home. Um, how quick do they learn the offense or the defense so they can learn it, know how to line up and execute and let their God-given ability take over? Um, how can they handle the speed of the game and the speed of a, of a higher level or a different level? Um, the quicker that happens, the, more, the sooner you can see their God-given talent and some of these newcomers will come in and, um, and be sprinkled in amongst some of these uh, guys returning. And um, we've certainly had a great summer. Uh, Dave Scholes and his staff have done a, a very, very nice job um, in developing our players. I, we've always said we're a developmental program. The summer is a huge, huge part of that. Um, and so a lot of these guys, even though they're coming back, um, their bodies have changed from the last time you've seen them on the field. And so um, a lot of those guys need to take a step um, in terms of their development on the field. Now they've done it off the field. But um, they've got to individually take a step and make a step improvement better. And then if we do enough of that collectively as a whole, I think um, we'll be a better football team. I know we're going to be a good team. Um, we strive to put ourselves in the position in the month of November to compete for a Mountain West championship. That goal hasn't changed since we've walked in here. And it's something that we truly believe we can put ourselves in a position to, and we can't wait to do it. So um, a few um, additions um, I want to make sure that you guys are aware of. Um, you know, first one, Jalen Green is a um, USC grad school transfer wide receiver. Um, Devin Hextel um, is a wide receiver from um, LA Valley uh, Junior College. He'll have two years. He'll be a two for two. Um, and then Shaq Bond is a DB out of Southwestern um, Junior College uh, transfer. He'll be a three for three, comes in as a sophomore. Uh, Louis Compton is not on the roster um, due to academics. And so those are just kind of a few. Uh, few personnel um, changes um, right there. Just make sure everybody's aware of. And um, at this time, we'll go ahead and open it up for um, any questions um, about these guys or camp. And Al, we'll start it off with you. Um, Good to have you back, Al. Well, I'm, I'm not back yet. Yes, you are, Al. So You're here, two, right to my left. I got two things. OK. Uh, one, last year, there was a lot of a, a talk this time about winning close football games. <coughs> and last year, again, a lot of close ones got away. Mm -hmm. Do you address that again mm -hmm. as much as you did last year in, or in a different way or what? That's my first question. Yeah, I think we'll be addressing it in a little bit different way. Um, I'll let you guys um, point it out as much as you do. Um, from a negative standpoint, I think everybody in this building's well aware of that. Um, the key to having a great season 
from a good season to a great season is we do have to win our share of close games. And so um, the emphasis of finishing, um, being exact, being detailed, um, dialing in at the end of a practice, the end of a drill, the end of a competitive drill um, is what's going to come up uh, this training camp. It's something that we're going to talk about. We're going to um, learn to do it mentally in several different ways. I don't need to go into detail about all that, but um, I think our guys will be ready for it, and I think they'll be hungry for those opportunities to um, to prove that we can play and we can make plays, and and um, we're playmakers late in the game, and that's we all recognize that that we need to win games at the end. The other thing was there are some position changes of guys that moved around. Sure. Most of that, did it happen in uh, spring camp, or are you still anticipating maybe in fall uh, an adjustment or two that you've evaluated after spring for positions? You'd have to be specific well, I mean, for me to guess. Know, Go ahead. Like, uh, I mean, Rockamore's played safety and he's mm -hmm. moved around, but like, mm -hmm. he started to play some of yeah. like a yeah. little bit as the outside linebacker yeah. and stuff. But is, it, is that, do you anticipate more of that or do you think you've probably solidified that? In I spring? think the biggest thing is our coaches offensively and defensively, um, you want um, flexibility in terms of lineups, um, position, um, you know, personnel groups, all that, the ability for John Trell, Baron, Gage, a bunch of those safeties to drop down and play an outside backer in a certain personnel package, play safety, I think is the flexibility um, of that defense. Chase Christiansen will play inside and outside. Um, our offensive linemen play multiple spots. Coach Farmer does a great job of trying to get our best five in there. You're gonna, we're, we'll see some in training camp. Uh, we experimented with some in the spring, so you'll see that just a little bit. Uh, the move from with uh, Gerald Bright to running back is permanent um, as of right now, so I don't see that changing. Coach, I'm wondering about with the new redshirt rule. Uh -huh. um, I know that it seems like universally coaches are in favor of it. it yeah, seems to be it's a, a great rule. Thing. How do you plan with Utah State to utilize that? I mean, yeah. Obviously, you don't know who you're going to use it on. No. Today, but just, I mean, you, have you thought about? I have. Yeah, we've talked about it in our staff meetings. This that'll be an ongoing talk, not throughout training camp, throughout early part of the season. So there's some strategy involved, and. Um, Certainly, I'm, I'm not going to share that right now with certain guys, but um, I think you'll see. It, it's a phenomenal rule, by the way. We've been trying to get that passed. Um, hats off to Todd Berry of the AFCA for really um, um, spearheading that. Um, <coughs> excuse me. That rule, um, that's going to help um, with a lot of things. That's going to help with um, not just the obvious a few freshmen or a few guys that have red shirts available can play in a few games and get some experience. Yes, that's the obvious. But you're also going to be able to use guys and take them, uh, play them in games late in the year when you have some injuries. Um, you are maybe playing your starters extended reps on special teams. It's going to be able to help some of that. I think you're going to see some guys playing, certain guys playing early in the season in some, some situations to actually see how they react in a game, knowing that you still have a red shirt. Um, I also think that that helps a lot of those newcomers, especially you think about freshmen, obviously, but it's even uh, some transfers that have, um, you know, red shirts available or returning players that have red shirts available. It helps, I think, the uh, kind of the, 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 uh, their spirit. You know, I think it's, it's pretty proven around here and in most places, most kids get their best grades in the fall while they're playing. Um, you know, you're playing, you have that motivation, all those things. You have a limited uh, window to study and to, to do all this, and so you have to get it done. Our kids get better grades a lot of times in the fall. Um, I think it helps in the locker room, you know, potentially more guys are playing. You can have different roles. And then guys may play them right out of a red shirt because they're playing very well. You know, they may be more experimental in September. So you're obviously going to have to keep a close eye on that number. Um, with that four, but I think what you'll see is I think you'll see some different, um, I don't want to say demeanor, I think you're going to see some different football teams at the end of the football year especially. That, that, that could come up. I'm kind of predicting it. You know, bowl game late in November, oh, all of a sudden we've got these guys that have four games left and we're going to go ahead and play them and now your kickoff cover team looks a little different or your defense looks a little different because guys are rested a little bit more. And so um, I think there's some strategy involved and we'll certainly um, keep a close eye on that this year, and that'll be ongoing discussions as the year goes on. It's a great question, and it's a great rule. Coach, yeah, you had quite a few. You had some banged up receivers during spring. Track. 
Cam, not, not only that, a lot of newcomers uh, joining joining the mix right now. Uh, how intriguing is that position battle going to be throughout fall camp? The outside receiver position will look completely different than you saw in the spring game. That is the understatement of this press conference. Okay, uh, With the addition of Jalen Green, Devin Hextel, um, the two true freshmen, Devin Tompkins and Tim Patrick that we signed, you're adding four dynamic um, wide receivers to that mix in addition to the guys we have coming back and Ron Quavian, uh, Tarver, uh, Savon Scarver, um, Taylor Compton, Chad Artist. You've got some guys in that room, the competition in that room just amped up, it just got better. Uh, guys are going to have to be consistent and prove that they deserve playing time, but that room, the outside receiver room, changed the most since we last talked. And it's a great job by, you know, just I think our coaches in recruiting and identifying those guys. But uh, those guys wanted to be here. They chose us over other schools. And um, I'm excited about them. Could you talk specifically about Devin Hextel and <clears throat> Jalen Green and just what they're going to bring to the table? Just, just the obvious that I know from recruiting, but until I see them um, start practicing tomorrow, um, just seeing them in the weight room, just seeing them interact with our players so far this summer, that's, that's the extent of my evaluation. Uh, it's not very deep right now. Um, Devin's tall. He's taller than Ron Quavian. Uh, Jalen is very good size. He's got big hands. He's got strong hands, you see, from some of the catches he made at USC and certainly knew about him when we were game planning for SC. And he's a former high school um, athletic quarterback that actually played QB at, at SC. Um, Devin is, I think, a little under the radar because um, didn't get a ton of touches in JC, but um, we're excited about both those guys. Coach, I suspect there are going to be some returning starters that are going to really need to compete hard to retain their starting spots. Uh, I mean, is this the most depth that you've had since you've been a head coach here? I think so. I haven't. Jason done that research, I think. Um, off the cuff, um, kind of my gut tells me you're probably right. You know, I know in a lot of areas, you look at the O line, you got five returning starters, and uh, we all know there's three or four guys that are going to be right there for in the mix, and and that starting O line could look different um, potentially. Who knows? Um, I ain't got a lot of returning starters on the defensive line. Um, you add Fuale Lua into it. Uh, you got returners at linebacker, and you add Tipanaliai into it now. Um, yes, we do have a lot of depth, and yes, every day um, guys have to, by production, you have to earn that spot, and there'll be some, <clears throat> apologize, um, there'll be some spots that the depth chart probably changes daily, and um, you guys, if we can minimize the live tweets at practice, that'd be nice, but I mean, it, you're going to see different guys go with the ones and different guys go with the twos, and then there's going to be a freshman or newcomer all of a sudden, just like Chucky Keaton, Jalen Davis, that or with the threes for a, a few days, and then all of a sudden they go with the twos, and then the head coach is going to walk by and say, I'd like to see him with the ones. And if they keep playing really well, you're going to see him play against Michigan State. So it's going to be, somebody's going to do that. I don't know who it is yet. But um, um, we've, that's kind of been a little bit, you know, that's been ongoing here for a while with true freshmen coming in and, and uh, earning starting roles and big, big openers. Coach, how important is this fall camp for the running backs? Yeah, it's going to be important for the running backs and the offensive staff. Um, you know, you got, um, you know, Darwin Thompson, uh, Gerald Bright. I mean, you got six of them that have played except Darwin. Uh, and Darwin got here in the spring. Uh, Trey Miller and um, Mo Walker are two big backs. Um, El Toro Ellen has played last year in certain roles. Justin Hervey's played last year in certain roles. Um, who steps up? Who's been a surprise? Who can stay healthy? Um, who can run the ball well? in practices and early games in September when they get uh, nicked up and bruised up. And I, I, I truly think the, the value of the running back is not known until October and November. Uh, the best running backs I've ever been around here at Utah State got better as the year went on. Uh, you know, one of the best that I've ever had around here at Utah State is Abu Wilson when I played. Abu Wilson got stronger as the year went on. Keep feeding him the rock. You know, Turbin had that mentality. Kerwin Williams, oh my goodness. I mean, he did this at the end of the year. You know, Joey Martino at the end of the year. I just think of those guys at the end of the year. It's, it's not training camp running backs, and I hope they're listening to this. You know, um, it's not early September. It's, 
getting beat up, learning how to practice, being a tough blue collar running back. As you go down the stretch, you get stronger and better when everybody else gets weaker. And I think that's the true threat, the two true test, litmus test of a running back. What's the biggest thing that Keith Patterson changes in your defense? Oh, I don't know about changes, Al. I mean, but um, is there a mentality? A I tell you what, our players have really responded to Coach Patterson very, very well. He is a positive, um, uplifting um, type of person by nature. Um, he has um, come in and really done exactly what I've asked him to do and more. Um, I asked him to learn our defense. I asked him to call our defense and then add his wrinkle and his twist to it. And he's absolutely doing that with some personnel um, tweaks here and there, some schematic things, some things maybe to make it simpler for our defense and, and um, allow them to play faster and very, very aggressive. You're going to see a very similar type aggressive play caller um, that we've had here in the past from a defense. That's his mentality. Um, but he is going to get those guys to run to the football. Um, he, Frank Miley, um, Stacy Collins, Julius Brown, Juan Iunga, they've got tremendous chemistry in that room. He's a great leader of men. Um, our players have really responded to him. And um, that's, that's kind of what Keith Patterson brings to the table. Coach, yeah, babe. last year for, for Jordan Love, there was a different situation coming into campus, coming in back up. How has he reacted? For who? For Jordan Love. OK. Um, how has he kind of reacted coming into camp, being kind of the guy in the front of the pack? Yeah, I thought he handled spring pretty well when he started out as number one. Um, here we go again, right? And and you got to handle starting out at training camp number one. He's got two young, talented quarterbacks that I know Coach Yost is really excited about the future. How quick that future is, I don't think any of us know with Henry Columbia and, and Andrew Peasley. And so first of all, for Jordan, I mean, if we started today, he'd be the starting quarterback. Does he extend his lead uh, over those guys? Does he make it obvious he's the best one in the program? And, and then does he improve his game? Uh, I've been proud of Jordan. I think his leadership skills have grown and developed um, over the spring and the summer. Um, knowledge of our offense as it continues to prove, and, and that's what he's done. Um, I think his consistency will go up, and he's gotten bigger and stronger. He's up to 220 pounds. Um, and so I uh, hope and trust and really truly believe that Jordan Love's best days are, are in the near future coming up. Yeah, I, th I haven't seen any RVs around here lately. I did hear about that with Baker and, and the other guy. But um, Jordan and Henry and, um, and Andrew, I think, first of all, um, what and I've coached in that room before. I think the first thing you want is a, you want a level of respect amongst all three of them. And you want them to be Utah State Aggies first and foremost, and they are. All three of those guys are tremendous team players. They're all three um, highly competitive, um, highly motivated um, individuals. And uh, I think it's a very healthy mix, and it's a very healthy room right now. And Coach Yost does a great job of managing all that. And they're, you got highly competitive kids in there, and they're all talented. There is always going to be excitement for fall camp, but it seems like maybe it's been ratcheted up a couple of notches. I mean, how palpable is that excitement that you're, you're sensing right now? I'm not sure what palpable means, but I think it's we're talking about excitement. Um, yeah, I, we all are, um, and it's always you know it's the um, what's this team? What's this 2018 version of the Aggies going to look like? Um, is the depth going to come back and play better? If they do, watch out for the Aggies. Um, and um, what's the leadership and the chemistry going to be throughout training camp? And then when adversity strikes. Uh, it will come. It comes in the form of injuries. It comes in the form of, um, you know, losing a player here or there for a game or, or a half or, you know, maybe one of the best players, leaders. We've seen it happen at certain positions over the years. How do we um, adjust, number one, schematically and, and mentally and emotionally as coaches and players, but then how do we overcome it? And the best teams that we've had here have overcome that and, and really crushed when crushed it when the adversity has come. So that's coming. I don't think any of us knows how we're going to handle that. And so that's what makes that's what makes it exciting, you know. So talk about the defense last year. You guys struggled against the run a little bit. Talk about bringing in Keith, and then you have like most of your front seven coming back. Do you feel like you guys can improve 
in stopping the run significantly? If we don't, we'll all be in trouble. <laughs> I, I would like to hope that those guys are bigger and they're stronger. They're another year experienced. You're adding two transfers to the mix. I've already mentioned those two guys. I think they're going to come in and play and help. Um, they're not the only solution. Um, they're only part of it. The development of all the uh, returning guys are part of that solution. Um, potentially role players moving up and playing more part of that solution. Replacing Dallin and Jalen and, and having good production from the secondary is part of that solution. Um, the chemistry and the cohesion and the leadership of the coaching staff on defense led by Keith is part of that solution. There's many solutions. So you mentioned replacing Jalen and Dallin. The secondary was your strength last year. Like, you feel like you guys have managed to fill in, you know, bring in some role players or transfers. Yeah. Enough to we'll see. A lot, you know, a lot of you guys don't know their names yet. Um, the fans don't know their names yet. But I, I think there's some talented guys back there. How well do they gel? Can we stay healthy? Um, you know, how much better does the front seven play? Um, the better the front seven plays, the more the secondary will be tested. It's football, right? Front seven doesn't play very well. Secondary looks better, and they don't get near as tested. I'm giving you some hints right now <laughs> to last year a little bit in that evaluation. So, Coach, since we're talking about the secondary, um, you've only got two cornerbacks that have ever seen – action in an FBS game. Mm -hmm. Talk about the spring that the group, the six of them had as a whole, and how you feel about their development. They're a competitive group. Um, I think their football knowledge is pretty high for young players. Um, Julius Brown has done a really nice job with them. Um, the leadership of Gage Ferguson, John Trell Rockmore, um, Jamarcus Ingram has been really key for that group. Um, yes, there's. I, I just mentioned. Well, except Ingram can go back and forth and play both. Um, you know, I mentioned a couple safeties, but that's leadership in that DB room. It's a room, and then it's a position amongst the room. And um, you know, we do need guys to step up um, at corner. Uh, somebody will in training camp, and and we'll go play with them. If, if I could just piggyback off that question, okay. really quick. What led to the decision to move Jamarcus from corner to safety in spring? Um, something I'd been thinking about almost, we thought about it during bowl prep, um, you know, just knowing Dallin was going to be leaving. Um, where's the safety production? You know, we, we, as some of the returning safeties that had roles last year, um, you know, from um, Aaron Wade to Braxton Gunther, some of those guys in, in roles last year, how much do they improve and how much how better do they play Shaq Bond's a new safety Christian Nash is a new safety um, you know Jamarcus is athletic he's long he's rangy he can play your free safety your post safety um, he's he's got he's smart he's sharp he knows it now after spending the spring there at safety he can play it from the safety he's got corner physical skills go back and forth um, makes us a lot more versatile in the back end Yep. Love. Yep. Um, what was like one thing from last season you were specifically wanting them to work on for the offseason? Um, I think, uh, you know, I think he wants his accuracy to go up, completion percentage to go up, being a little bit more accurate. That's done with a few things. Number one, your footwork um, from a physical standpoint. And then number one, from a mental standpoint, would be your knowledge of the system, timing, um, where guys are going to be, knowing where your dump down guys are, where your back is, where your outlet is, those kind of things. I think um, we saw some improvement during this in the spring, and I think that he'll, he'll you'll see some in training camp. And then along with that as well, uh, bringing in a new starter midseason, not not the best of scenarios to like open up the playbook for them. How's this offseason? Is it going to open up maybe a couple more wrinkles and options for what? Yeah, I would I would say so. Um, we didn't we didn't condense it for him though last year. I can say that, but uh, Jordan Smart, um, he invests a lot of time. Um, he's got a lot of the same qualities as a lot of the quarterbacks that have played well around here that have invested off season time and and um, uh, grabbing guys and learning stuff. He's a football junkie. He's a film junkie. He's in here all the time. Um, yeah, I, I hope that. Uh, I hope he reaps some of the benefits of how hard he's worked.